featured in Women Who Podcast magazine, this show has it all. With each and every single episode, my guests tap in to each of my audience's hearts, minds, and souls from TEDx speakers, transformational coaches, and viral TikTok stars. With each and every single episode, you will find something relatable that connects to you and can help you and impact you in this life's journey. About how um, you don't have to hit rock bottom in order to turn your life around. Um, you emphasize like you don't have to have that epitome moment to actually um, get your life together. Could you elaborate a bit on what you meant by that? Yeah. So a lot of times in my life growing up, I like wasn't sick enough for people. Like I wasn't in enough of a crisis to qualify for crisis resources. And then I wasn't quite I, my, my symptoms of schizophrenia weren't exaggerated enough to qualify for a certain type of support. And it's like, that's such a shame. We, we say that, oh, wait until they're really, really, really sick. And that's when they'll bounce back. And it's sad. Like there's nothing preventative about that. It's like, we're encouraging people to get worse and worse. Um, and that doesn't always turn out like that. Like think of all the people who say, oh, it took me getting to rock bottom to realize I had to turn my life around. Think of all the people who hit rock bottom and passed away or all the people who hit rock bottom and never spoke about it to anybody. Like there's a survivorship bias around um, mental health where we shine a light on people who really got their life back together and they learned in this really dramatic story like a, like a blockbuster movie, but lots of people don't have to learn that way. So my point is, you don't have to wait for your life to get worse to make a decision about how you want to make it better. But um, is there a difference between pornography addiction and sex addiction or does it fall into the That's, same category? It's still, you know, it's the, the scientists who and, and psycho, psychologists who get together every five or 10 years and decide this stuff and they put it into what's called the DSM. It's the Diagnostic Statistical Manual that is used for diagnosing patients. Unfortunately, it was a great it was a great resource in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Unfortunately, uh, technology moves so fast these days that 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 book is actually very behind. Uh, but the way that it's sort of set up now is that um, sex addiction tends to mean every kind of a, of addiction of sexual nature, plus having sex. What I would like to see is much like we have drug addiction as an umbrella, I'd love to see sex addiction or sex related addiction as an umbrella, and then have intercourse addiction, porn addiction, exhibitionism, voyeurism, you know, the, there, there are other things besides intercourse and pornography addiction, you know, you get people who are peeping toms, and that's a legit addiction, you get people who, you know, are complete voyeurs and want to, you know, expose themselves to people that can be an addiction as well. So there is, you know, it isn't just about porn. It isn't just about intercourse. And I would so much prefer if we could, if we called them sexually related addictions and then broke them down, like we break down heroin or meth or cocaine into these different drug addictions. But that's one thing I push. We'll see if that ever happens. Uh as well as vulnerability, transparency, and a form of comfort and acceptance. This show has it all. Um, uh, I met an amazing lady named Lisa Nichols, who said to me and many others, she's shared this golden nugget of wisdom. Your story doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the person that's going to help. So, um, and I know you always have like advice, obviously. Do you have any advice you can share with my audience, those who are single, in relationships? What advice do you have as far as my um, audience in regards to relationships? Because I'm sure they have a lot of thoughts and have no clue what to do, similar to myself. <laughs> Honestly, if you're single, my best advice is don't go don't wake up every day and expect to find somebody don't like force it because it's not going to happen sometimes the best relationships come in your life when you don't expect it like just maybe you because like right now i have i'm going through jury duty this week let's say you go to jury duty you can meet the love of your life in that room you know but you you don't know like 
I, so I guess I, I'm just not wording it right. I guess when you go anywhere, don't expect to find love. Don't think you're going to find it. Just do you be yourself. Do not be anyone but yourself and just kind of let it happen. Like, like the only thing I will say is if you're, if you're single and you're trying to find love and you're a, what's that called? Like a homebody, like you don't go anywhere. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you with that because that the only way is to meet somebody. I mean, unless you're like on a dating app, I do. And to answer the question that anyone might have about dating apps, they do. I think, I think they do work. The problem is maybe the people you're swiping on don't know how to do it. Or maybe they're just, because a lot of the times it's conversation. People don't know how to have a conversation or they do. And then it just dies because somebody doesn't know how to keep it going. And I think that's a huge problem because so many people live on their phone. It's like they've almost forgotten how to interact in real life. But, um, and if you're in a relationship, my message to any guys out there is be the guy you were in the beginning, be the guy that she fell in love with. Because honestly, I've seen so many couples not care about their own relationship anymore. Like they just, eh, okay. like, you know, they just don't care. And that's why she's not going to do that for you. Or that's why that's going to happen. Or this is going to be who you be, who the person that you both fell in love with, like from the beginning, you know, be that same person, obviously grow together, but remember who she fell in love with, you know, the guy that she met, not the guy that you are now. Um, and when it comes to girls, when it comes to girls, dot, 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 there's so much you can say. <laughs> but I mean, very complicated breed I will have to say that we are complicated it's 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 yeah it's tough the way I look at it though is don't overthink it because once you overthink things with girls or relationships you just you end up not knowing what to do you panic you freeze you fold whatever just be yourself absolutely um so my trauma actually started at childhood so childhood i had some dysfunction i had my biological father slap me across the head and call me i think stupid and then in school i was really bullied really bad which actually led to a physical altercation where a girl punched me in the face and then shortly after all that stuff happened um, fast forward to 2016 or before 2016, actually my first relationship in college was extremely abusive. And then, um, in 2016, um, I was running on a trail in broad daylight and I was assaulted. And then shortly after just a couple weeks after that incident happened, I found myself in the middle of a murder scene and I had all the locks locked behind me when I got into the apartment and um, I was sexually assaulted, I was strangled and I had a knife pointed to my back and I thought that that would be my last day to live. I didn't think I was getting out of there for a second. I didn't think I was getting out of there alive for a second. I thought that I was going to be the next um, murder victim. And uh, then I ran down 18 flights of stairs and I ran across the street to a pay phone and I then called 911 and then I was taken to the police station for questioning. And the first thing the detective said to me was, please make us a promise that you won't turn to the streets for drugs and, and prostitution, et cetera. And that really hit me hard um, because for them to have to say that as their first opening line um, really has a huge impact, a huge, that's a huge statement right there that that's the first thing they have to say. It just tells you that majority of survivors of crime end up turning to the streets for prostitution, drugs, alcohol, which is horrific that they find that that's their only outlet. Um, so it was definitely eye-opening to have that promise. Um, as a start of their questioning. Wow. Uh, first off, I commend you for sharing that with me just now. It couldn't have been easy. And um, just out of curiosity, considering everything you just shared with me, do you think it's difficult for you to form, um, what, 
have some type of um, intimacy or communication with anyone you've come across in your life? Um, I mean, I, I have. I have uh, dated actually um, the previous to that. And it was just more manipulation, more power, more control, just really bad toxicity um, in my life. So I just really focused on myself because like my trust issues aren't it's really hard. It, I mean, it's hard just to like, not even from a romantic standpoint, but to trust anybody in general, because you don't know what someone's truly capable of. You know, I'm a big believer that talk is cheap, words are words, anybody can say anything, but it's actions that speak volumes. It's actions that actually mean something. Here is an exclusive sneak peek of season four. Be sure to tune in to the new season for many more episodes in store for this season. Um, and I personally know that I would feel a lot more comfortable if um, like in order to own a gun, you had it was required uh, to take a gun safety course as well, because it would um, I think it would help a lot with like uh, just sort of negligent deaths that don't need to happen because a lot of deaths that happen from gun violence are due to negligence and not knowing or not caring or not um, taking gun safety precautions seriously. What do you think? Um, I couldn't agree more in regards to a gun safety course. Honestly, that hadn't even crossed my mind when um, deciding to discuss this topic. Um, I just know that it's it's been in the news as of recently, and many people have debated about it in regards to guns and laws being more stricter in regards to the elementary school shooting. And if I'm not mistaken, another shooting took place several weeks after that as well, which put people in an uproar as a result of gun violence and just the fact um, that people need to take more precautions. Um, in, res in regards to this discussion, I did look up some statistics, which I'm going to share with my audience and you before. So in 2020, the most recent year for which complete data is available, about 45,222 people died from gun-related injuries in the U.S., according to the CDC. That figure includes gun murders and gun suicides. So in regards to what you mentioned about gun safety, that definitely should be considered an option in regard to that statistic alone. And I'm sure that doesn't even include the related gun statistics going on in 2020. Well, it may, may possibly, but I don't know how the system works in regards to recording that, but there's probably plenty of other gun-related incid incidences which have yet to be discovered, unfortunately. So Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So um, in regards to the gun safety course, um, I'm sure you are familiar with the gun shooting that happened in Texas and what happened to the elementary school of which um, 19, ch 19 children and two adults were killed in regards to that shooting. Um, there was recent footage, and again, my audience, I don't push the envelope often, but this does need to be discussed. Um, there was footage that was released, I don't know if you watched it or not, um, of the officers of which they had the opportunity to investigate or stop the shooter, but were, for some unknown reason, from the footage that was revealed, decided not to engage until there was a go ahead from one of the senior officers. Um, what was your opinion or did you have a thought in regards to from seeing that footage? What was your thoughts on that? Yeah, I believe that it took them um, over an hour to do anything to stop it. And I believe that the reasoning was because there was a discrepancy in the chain of command um, as far as like who was in charge, what was going on. Um, I know that eventually what ended up happening was it was a border patrol agent um, sniper that ended up taking out the shooter uh, of that Uvalde shooting. 
And um, I mean, the more information that comes out about this, the the like worse it gets kind of a thing. Um, I think that it was a severe, there was a severe lack of empathy. I feel like there was a severe lack of care and compassion that was given um, in this circumstance. And I don't think that we are going to have all of the answers um, right now. We may never get all of those answers just because of the way of like the chain of command and everything went uh, like went down. Um, but I coming soon to a device near you on August 22nd, 2022. See you soon.